Right. Right <clears throat> Okay, so, you know, we've got this little hand down there, reactions. Um, feel free to push it or, you know, I'll actually push it now for Michael. I'll give you the thumbs up. So if you've got any questions, you know, feel free, just ask away. Um, otherwise, just type it in the chat feature, and then I'll just relay that onto Michael. Hey, Michael, I like the background, the black, looking good. Yeah, it's sort of dark gray. Sometimes I like changing things, you know. It's, it's less harsh on the eyes, I think. Mm, that's good. Anyway, we've got a model here. It's not our model. It's a diagnostic model made by somebody else. We've got a few teeth there. They've probably been, been mirror imaged or something. Anyway, let's, let's get started. So in the crown module, we, we're just going to do random stuff, whatever comes to my mind. But I have saved a few files because, you know, it saves us from watching the entire procedure over and over again. Okay, so um, we put these into our collections first. So Wolf, maybe a bit of comment yeah, so, here. Yeah. I'll just go, I'll just do, do the work. Yeah, so the first thing we do always, we put the scans into the center of the workspace. So, you know, Blender knows where is up and where's down and, you know, and by putting the scans, the working, you know, whatever we're working on into collection means that Blender can now pick up um, you know, what is what. So it knows what the antagonist is and um, so on. So we, we're just dividing whatever's in the, the Blender scene into these collections or layers. So in Photoshop, you call them layers. In Blender, you just call them collections. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what Michael's doing now, he is just outlining the margin and the... Um, a lot of the, the work is color-coded. So we see earlier on the working model was whitish and now it's a green shade. And that tells you this is now, we call it a segment model. So this is the model that we use for outlining the margin. And when that is done, that creates a yellow surface. Again, color-coded for the upper jaw, it's a yellow surface. For surfaces in the lower jaw, they are all green in color. So here, Michael's going to outline the, the pontic area, the area, you know, the gum touching part. And this is quite overly large because we want to make sure that'll be used for cutting tool later on. So he's just moving the, the, the um, outline a little bit lower to make sure the full contour of the the, the denture to the tooth, the tooth library sits on the, the gum. So um, this creates another surface. And lastly, he'll do the other one. <clears throat> and it's very helpful to save your work as you go. And this is a good habit to fall into, probably not just with um, Blender CAD, but any other CAD work, keep on saving your work. So here's the, um, he's included the contact area. He's made a surface for that because contacts play a large uh, role in making crown and bridge work because we need to block those out as well. So the next step is surveying. Um, so looking at the surfaces from the top, um, you just find a good path of insertion and by going into transparent, you can actually see where these little undercuts are. <clears throat> Michael's just pointing, pointing it to it. Um, so, all right, he's going to push that block out upper button. And that will again change the scene into, um, Michael will show you the, the gray underneath. It, it makes little blocked out thimbles on the underside of these surfaces. And of course, these blocked out um, abutments, let's call them abutments, will be used to create the inner fitting surfaces for the crowns later on. So now color coded, they turn blue. Now we know we are in the next process, um, which in involves putting, um, we've got to separate these surfaces out. Again, Blender needs to know what are the contact 
points and what are the abutments. So um, he's just done that, the contact turned pink. And now he's selecting the abutments to put down a support margin. So the support margin is just a thin little ledge that um, protects the milling from becoming too thin and chipping. So you can, you can choose between 1500 microns and 200 microns, but you can also set this um, support margin yourself. So depending what you want to do. So on goes the cement spacer or die spacer. <clears throat> so the procedure sort of follows normal laboratory procedure. You know, you've got the model, you're ditching it, you, you're putting die spacer onto it. That die spacer can be set. By default, it is 50 microns, but uh, you can set it to whatever you like. There's a distance between the pencil line margin and the die spacer. Um, you, that can also be set. So you can pull it away from the pencil line or towards the pencil line. That can also be inverted, um, but we've passed that step. Next goes on a safety zone. Now the safety zone is just an indicative zone, which will let us know when the coping or the crown becomes too thin. Because the idea is the, the tooth library tooth, the mesh of the tooth needs to be pulled over the green zone. And Mike will show how that works in a minute. So the safety zone is by default set to 0 0.5 millimeters. Again, if you think that's too thin, you can always set that um, a little bit thicker. So um, from here, Michael's going to bring back the antagonist. So the antagonist, um, what the next step is, um, we make out of the antagonist scan, we make a thin shelled model. And this model will be offset. Now, when I say offset, we're making it slightly bigger than what it, the scan is. Currently, it's set to 0 0.1 millimeter bigger or offset. And this will determine how heavy your bite is. So if you have uh, zirconia crowns that are always high in bite, just increase that offset a little more. Uh, essentially, we're using that antagonist model as a cutting tool, which he's doing now, uh, to then cut out the occlusion. <clears throat> Now, a live trimming feature will let you um, pull the tooth up or down. And that is, uh, you're finding a happy medium between losing all of your occlusion or having the crown too thin. So here we set the vertical height of the actual tooth. So we don't, we want to preserve some of the occlusion. As you can see, the higher he pulls it, the, the more it, it trims it out. So. We, essentially, we've got an invisible upper antagonist, or it's actually the lower antagonist sitting there. So you just raise up the, the tooth and just find a happy medium there. Then by pressing that trim restoration, that kind of finalizes the, the Boolean operation. <clears throat> now, this is a static cut, just the upper against the lower. If you want to do a dynamic cut, you'll need to use the articulator module and that will perform protrusive and excursive adjustments. Next step is he's going to adjust the, con the Pontic, Pontic uh, fitting surface against the gum. So the, the outline he made earlier on will be used for cutting tool to trim. Um, trim back the tooth library tooth back to the gum level. So if you look at from underneath, it's trimmed it. Um, you, can, you can pull it in or out a bit. So if you wanted the gum to blanch or to, to press into the, lightly into the mucosa, you can do that just by using those arrows there. So each one is 0 0.1. So we know that it's, it compresses the tissue by 0 0.1 with each time we press it. Yeah, so the okay. next part, um, <clears throat> go, he, Michael's going to the generating the crowns uh, submenu. 
this is where the magic happens. So first thing, you just um, pull the mesh of the tooth library tooth over the pencil line. So we're just trying to establish a good um, a tooth emergence profile from the tooth prep line upwards. So you're just bulking it out, pulling the mesh out. It's very easy to do. <clears throat> so you just click into the mesh and use the G key. And because we have a proportional editing um, feature there, it can pull it out <coughs> proportionally. So now the generate upper crown button has been pressed. This takes a little while to do the calculations. Um, you can imagine there are many calculations taking place because we're trimming out the die spacer. We're trimming out the blocked out section of it. And if you've got um, other drill compensations, which we haven't done in this one, it will trim that out as well. So the tooth has now been adapted to the, um, to the margin. And in edit mode, you'll be able to see the mesh, uh, integrity of the mesh is of a pristine quality, which is ideal. On the, you can just make out where the cement space has been trimmed out as well. There's a little line going around it. So Michael's, instead of repeating the whole process, he's just opening another file, which has um, completed the, the molar. So next, uh, we're going to place um, the bridge connectors between, to, to turn these crowns into a bridge, essentially. So this uses a, a weld feature, we call it. <clears throat> and the weld feature will create um, kind of a bubble that you can put between the pontic and the actual crown. So you can see on the underside are sort of a pink dyes and they, they will be used to, in case you make the contact a little bit too far down, it will trim that out for you. So in goes the contact bubble or whatever we want to call it, you can scale it and just submerge it into an ideal position. <clears throat> now you can duplicate that and then drag it over to another side. So if you've got multiple units, you just use a duplicate version or you can just exit and then start again from new for the other contacts. But to save time, you can just do both in one go. <clears throat> so Michael's toggling in and out of the magnet tool, which is on the top toolbar. Um, the magnet tool will um, cause this bubble to stick to any surfaces. So by deactivating it, you can then freely move this um, this little sphere wherever you like. So he's just strengthening up the support, giving it more support. And then by pressing the join weld button, it kind of merges all of that together. Next step, um, we're going to just smooth this junction. And the gray areas around the margin, we call that a protection zone. So no matter what you do to these crowns now, um, the inner fitting surface of the crown and the margin are uh, completely protected. So they, they won't distort or anything like that. Excellent. So you just go, Michael's just going around the whole, the whole bridge. Um, following this, um, he's going to adjust the contacts for the, between the two premolars. <clears throat> now you, yeah, by pushing the button, you're bringing the, essentially the pink contact area back. And um, he, he's just pressed the auto contact cutter, which makes um, this gray translucent cutting tool of the blocked out version of the contact point. 
and you can offset that. So if you find that your contacts are always too tight, you can just expand it out a little bit. So we've set it to, I think it's 50 microns. Now it looks like a little glass window that you just pull, you using an inflate tool to actually inflate the contact point, which means we can give this um, case a really nice broad contact to prevent any food traps or anything like that. So you can push or pull this mesh in and out. Keeping in mind that the fitting surface is still protected. So no matter what you're doing to the outside, you're not going to distort the, the crown. So now by pushing cut, the contact point is cut out, as you can see. And all that needs to be done is just smooth it down a little bit. So we know contacts are very important. If you've got um, adjacent crowns, then those path of insertions are determined through the initial surveying of the yellow surfaces, if you can remember. So here's the finished bridge. Um, he's just going to smooth down the, the pontic surface, the fitting surface. To do that, you deactivate the masking tool. Now, this is where you have to be super, super careful. You can imagine you do not want to touch the, the margins of your crowns while the, the mask tool is turned off. So just be careful there. Exiting that and voila, the bridge is finished. Now he can, he's going to go out down to the bottom part of the menu and press the finish restoration button. This will now um, make a duplicate version of the bridge and it will set the point of origin exactly to where the milling export needs to be. And you've got a little arrow there that you can just um, turn the bridge around so that it, the fitting surfaces of the bridge face upwards into the Z direction. You've got to press the selection only button um, checkbox um, to make sure that um, you know it will only export the, the bridge and not everything else in the scene. So now you've got these special hide and unhide buttons where you can just bring things back. Excellent. So that's, that finish, finishes that. Fantastic. Well so done. let's do the next let's do the next one. Let's let's make a coping on the front tooth. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one. Okay, so the module, the module, whether you're making a full contour crown or a coping, halfway through the whole thing is exactly the same. So um, you do the the outline again. <coughs> After that, you, you get the yellow surfaces and then you survey the, the, um, the case. <clears throat> so now Michael won't need to include the contact points when making a coping. So this will greatly speed up the, the process. Oh, uh, this is the wrong file. <clears throat> That's the wrong file as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've, did I save this? Yes, I did coping, coping here. All right, yeah. So this is where we take over and we select the green zone as a starting point to make our coping. So the green zone is set to a certain thickness. It's 0 0.5. <clears throat> so if you can make copings um, with that, that, that's fine. Otherwise, set that a little bit thicker. Okay, so uh, this will cover 
cover the abutment with a mesh in which you can now set the thickness of the final coping. What are you setting it to, Michael? 0 0.5? Yep. Yep. Good. Um, now from here, you can just pull it over the pencil line, but we don't need to because it is there already. Just pulling the mesh higher for support, for ceramic support. So we, we mainly work with the mesh rather than a, a full, like an object that we need to sculpt and all that. Working with the mesh is way faster. All right, this will create a another layer. <clears throat> actually, this will this will actually um, generate the coping as such. Here we go. So it's adapted it nicely to the margin. And the mesh looks pretty good. Okay, one can smooth that down. Again, the inner fitting surface is protected. Excellent, and ready to go, ready for export. Okay, Michael's going to put a, a collar on the back of it. So by using the inflate tool, you can just pull the mesh, the um, pull it outwards in a kind of a step. And then just to give it a bit more definition, there is a crease tool in Blender, which we've incorporated on the menu. And that will allow you to make a definite edge. I quite like this tool, Michael. It's like a little magic wand that you just pull over and it, it will indent it like that. And then you can use the reverse to actually um, make the edge on the outside nice and crisp. Excellent. Just a final smooth. And ready for export. That's good. <clears throat> Okay, let us cut back. We'll cut back somewhere. Okay, so we can cut back this. Making a cut back. It's a coping, but we can cut it back. <clears throat> yeah, so if you want to create uh, like translucent effects or something like that. Here you can see the green safety zone. That was because I think the safety zone was set to 0 0.5 and the layer was set to 0 0.6, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah, so you... both, both of them 0 0.5. Okay. <coughs> All right, so this cuts out a, kind of a window, a cutback. And then I think he's just, you're just going to um, smooth it down and then thicken up over the green safety zone. Yeah. So just using the inflate tool again. Just pulling it over. Just to make sure it doesn't melt too thin. I can't hear you well for you still there. Yeah, I'm still there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So we're
can do this with with in, any crown. Yeah, so you could you could do well. that with the bridge as well, hey. Just to create a cutback. Yeah. Cool. Are, th are there any questions, Brantua? Uh, we'll just w we'll just wait for this to generate like this. Yeah. It's just painting over there. It's a bit like the bleach um, module, isn't it, Michael? Except yeah, it doesn't add. It just subtracts it. Okay, so it, it gives you, this is like a, a cutting tool. It gives you like an indicative measure of what, how it's going to cut it out. And then we'll just smooth it and that's it. Excellent. Excellent. Nice, nice work. And thicken it around the green zone. Yeah. Okay, we still thicken it and then that's about it. I might okay. have to I might have to change my background black. It looks really good. The contrast. Fantastic. So just great. Uh, we could we could have taken it. Uh, for now we leave it like that. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm sharing. Uh, I think the microphone's dying, but no less. France. Sorry, no, I just had to so cross, cross the solve the other again. Uh, question, on the central that you did, is it possible to do just the incisal cutback? Yes, it is, it is. But of course, we, we, can, we can opt not to make a coping, but we can opt to use the, the tooth. I don't know where my tooth like, is now. Like a crown and then do cutback just on the crown. Yes, we, we we would then be using um, the the actual tooth, and then we're going to make a, a smaller version of the tooth. I don't know where my tooth is. Have I deleted okay, I'm, it? I'm, I'm with Just you. Have a look. So it's yeah, a sub, yeah. subtract so from the with, with, with the tooth. Yeah, I've lost your screen, Michael. Yeah, we that one. And then share going share to, your screens. I think. I think we've yeah. lost Michael. Frames. We can't see it. No. It's break, breaking up badly. Yeah. yeah, I think it's breaking up. a bad connection. Are you there? Yeah. Am I back? Am I back online? Yeah, your screen isn't there, your monitor. Oh, gosh. I don't know what's happening tonight. Am I there? Yeah, I can see you, but not your monitor, Michael. Um, return to meeting. All right, am I back? Yeah, you've, you, we haven't lost you. We've just, um, yeah, you're, yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, there you know. You're back. Yeah, all right, we would then choose that tooth and we're going to go into the the frame. So we're going to select and create a frame. And that that's creates an undersized version of that tooth. So let's accept that frame. You see, so that's an undersized version of that specific tooth. Can you put okay. the um, safety zone to the back, Michael? 
Yes, I can. Um, I can't select it. Hold on a second. Like that, you see. So that's that's what it then looks like. And then we're back to square one because then we have to to take that across the pencil line. So you could set you can set how much um, you want to sub make it smaller. Hey. So you've got the tooth yes, lively tooth, and then you can shrink it as such. Yeah. So it's a smaller version, and then just covering that up. Or you could use a full contour crown as we did with, you know, when we generate the crown, and then you can cut that back as well. No, that was I was thinking of, you know. Y yeah, yeah, you can do that as well. So you could quite, do quite a quite mm -hmm. a lot of options. Yeah, that's what I like yeah. about Blender, the options. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so anyway, that's that's good. And then generate generate this frame. Generate upper frame. Because um, th that crease tool, you can use that on the bridge as well, or any anywhere really to also cut back like a mammal on Correct, mm -hmm. correct, Wolfgang. Correct. Which is quite yeah, nice. I was, I was thinking of, of, of your pontic connectors. If you want to make them intersecting, do you still do the same and then just take your crease tool and, and, and draw it down the middle to, to give it more of a, a separate tooth effect? Yeah. Yes. You, well, you can take, the, so this is generate, and now we can actually take the crease tool if we want to. So here, here's a crease tool. And then we can, we can crease it. Yeah. You, you can you set see? the strength, oh, eh, Michael. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can set the strength. You can sort of draw your, draw your, you know, like mammalon effects or whatever, <clears throat> depending how deep you want it. Chuck some lines across it like this. You see? So there's quite a lot we can do, which is absolutely fantastic. It's beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Good. Perfect. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So, for yeah. you too, eh? Looks all looks quite nice. All right. Thanks, Wolfgang, as well. It's um it's night time here on the Gold Coast and <laughs> time to go to sleep. Yeah, I, I want to thank you too for having it at this time. It's the only way here in South Africa I can watch it, so I can join. So thanks, thanks to you two for keeping up and open the eyes. Eh? Yeah, it's the we'll same. And we'll catch you again sometime. For sure. Cheers. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.